Thank you very much for having me back, especially to Dr. Fitzgerald. I um, appreciate the opportunity to come back and talk to you again this year. Uh, I'm going to focus today um, out on eye tracking and neurological function. So I'm going to talk a lot about eye tracking and the data that comes from eye tracking and how that's linked to different brain regions. Then Dr. Fitzgerald's going to come up and she's going to talk in more depth about clinical applications of, of this information. So it's kind of a twofer here. As always, it's a team effort. Um, and one of the things I really have always enjoyed about coming to Nora is the multidisciplinary approach. At Right Eye, we also have that multidisciplinary approach with functional neurologists, data scientists, and computer scientists that all help to, uh, to understand the information that we're getting. This is the last slide that I had last year. This is where we ended last year with this work. And basically, you've heard this over the last few days, uh, but we know that the eye is not independent of the brain. We know that the retina is part of the brain and that the brain is highly involved in vision and vision, visual processing. So as we go through here, I'm going to talk about some of these connections. Some of it I'm going to simplify, and there's a lot more that we can talk about it, you know, offline or at other times. But just in terms of looking at that picture, it, it, it speaks a lot, I think, that um, how involved the eyes and the brain are together. I'll also talk a little bit about the, the process that you all do every day, and that is to first examine and then to provide some kind of therapy or training or some mitigation and then to re-examine. So we'll go through that process several times today. Let's start with eye tracking and, and basically what is eye tracking, eye tracking 101. So an eye tracker uses infrared light to capture at about 90 times a second the position of the eye. And that information is given to us in form like an Excel spreadsheet where it shows us the X and Y, the horizontal and the vertical coordinate of the gaze. Um, it also gives us information about pupil, about the pupil, about timing, where the eye was at certain points in time. It really allows us to see what the patient or the user is, is doing with their eyes. We use that information to then create algorithms and to classify eye movements for further analysis. So from that raw data, the X and Y coordinates, currently we have about 586 of last count algorithms that we've developed from, from those data points. We then used a uh, different statistical methodology and our first goal was to understand what is normal. And boy did, especially I, have a lot to learn on this. <laughs> um, you know, there's no normal versus not normal category. That's exactly why we have a scale here. And we took 3,000 people that had no clinical issues, um, at least no known clinical issues, and we ran them through a series of tests using the eye tracker. And then with that data, we took all of those algorithms and we put them in a bucket, just like the bucket that you see here. Not literally, but you get the idea. We then ran a regression, and what the regression does is it tells us which of those algorithms are important to determining what's normal. And of those 586 algorithms, 142 came out as contributing to some level of normality. Okay? And they may, some of them may contribute a lot and some of them may contribute a little. That's why the, some of the stones are big and some of the stones are a little. Some of the algorithms are thrown straight out because they weren't contributing at all, okay? We then use those 142 metrics to create a scale from dysfunctional to exceptional. 
and you'll see that functional range in the middle there. And what that is, is it's based on age, where five different age groups came out as showing distinctly different levels of normality. So for example, in eye tracking and in eye movements, there's nothing out there at the moment that says, you know, developmentally, where should we cut off groupings? You know, in developmental psychology, there's um, different age groups that says, okay, at 12 years old, we expect this to happen. So anything between 6 and 12, we can categorize as a group together. Anything from 13 to 18 can be another group. There's nothing out there like that for eye tracking. So we use this data method to basically put all of that information in one group and see what ages clustered together. And based on what ages cluster develop together, that developed our functional range. And that range shifts up and down. Sometimes it's broader based on the age groups. And so we developed this scale. And then through our tests, we were able to show that the individual who's taking the test, we were able to give them a score on that scale. And I'll get into this a little bit more in a moment as to how we do that.